What's up everybody, today we're going to be making a mining bot in Win Automation version 9. So to get things started, you want to download Runelight Plus version 0, uh, R022, like I have here, and you want to open that one up. And you don't want auto attach to Runelight enabled, so just click start Runelight. We'll wait for that to open. Now it might freeze here when it tries to attach. So what you want to do is close this. Um, now that room light's open, reopen this again. And just go attach to room light and click the open process. It'll attach and now we have this red room light toolbox on the uh, room light window. You can just minimize that for now. Now in Win Automation, you want to open a new process, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Mining Bot. Okay. So this is the Win Automation window. Let's move that out of the way. Actually, we don't need that now. Um, I'm going to make three functions. I'll call this one Rock One. Make another one, call this one rock two and rock three. For each rock that we're going to be mining, it'll have its own function. Okay, I'm just going to pick a world real quick. All right, so these are the three rocks I'm going to be mining. So what I need to do is highlight these rocks specifically. So we want to open up the red room light toolbox, open the room light window. Oh, you can just go down here. And now go to uh, the red, not the red, um, the room light toolbox here, the developer tools, and you want to enable tile location so we can get the coordinates of each tile. And we also want to enable ground objects. Actually, no game objects. Okay, so open the red Genesis toolbox here. I'll get rid of my old ones. Okay, add a new game object. Now we need to add the object ID, so it's 11361. The object X is 3222 and 3147. 3147. Is it an NPC? No, and I want it to be a specific color. I want it to be blue. So I'll add that, and now you can see that it's highlighted that rock blue. We want to do the same thing, but with these two as well. So I'm going to add a new object. 11361, object X is 3223 and 3148. Blue, actually no, I'll go three separate colors. Honestly, it doesn't matter. No, I'll, I'll go with one color, that way it saves time. Typically, I would use three different colors though, so I can distinguish between the three in the bot. But um, just for time's sake, I'm going to use the same color. So 11361 again. Coordinates 3223, 3146. 3146. Okay, that blue. There we go. So now we can turn off tile locations and game objects. So to get things started, I'll go to the main tab here. Um, going to go run function rock one move mouse to image and we know that the image is a giant blue square so you can select a big portion of it that way if someone walks along with this same color it won't um, try and click on them instead so we'll just call that rock for now search on the foreground window so that means the window that you've selected um, search on specified subregion of the window select the subregion so I want to select my room light okay and I want to only click within this region that I'm selecting okay and I want to move my mouse with an animation at a fast speed and I also want to send a left click one second after moving the mouse so if we can test that real quick. No, no, I can't. That didn't work. That's fine. 11361. 
have to fade back tall locations. Three, two, three, three. And three, one, four, eight. Now we have a yellow color. Um, I'm going to get rid of that one as well, and I'll also add it. One, one, three, six, one. Three, two, two, three. Three, two, two, three. And three, one, four, six. And we'll make that color whatever that color is. Okay, so now we have three different colors. So rock one will only be this window, but I'm going to quickly make it focus the window before it does anything. So focus window by title and class, and you can drag this onto your window. Yeah. Okay, so we're in light, and if you put this little asterisk here, that will, um, it's like a wild card. It will always uh, focus on that. Okay, so we want to run this. I'll close this real quick. Start there, and it should focus on the window, and it went for the blue rock. Now we want it to wait. We want to wait for that image to disappear, and we select rock, foreground, subregion. Okay, so we're currently waiting for this blue rock to disappear. So we click the blue rock, and then once we've clicked it, we wait for it to disappear. Once it disappears, we want to run function rock2. Now you can just click these two and copy them. Control C, Control V. You can also copy that. And we want to run Rock 3 just to save time. All right, for Rock 2, we will make it the yellow one. So select a portion of the yellow. I just want to change the subregion. Actually, it shouldn't matter since it covers all three. So. Wait for the image, delete that, and we want to wait for the image, the yellow one. So now, when we run this, it should click the blue one. And now it'll wait for the blue to disappear. And then it should click the yellow one. There we go. And then it waits for the yellow one to disappear and then it moves on to rock three. So we can copy these two into rock three. We can delete that and we want image number three to be this. Call that rock three. Edit this, delete, add image rock three. I'm going to create a new function called drop. I want to empty the inventory. I'm just going to quickly make sure entity hider is on. That hides other players. Um, disable that. Okay. So it'll run rock one, rock two, rock three, and then it'll drop. And we want to drop. Uh, the rocks from the inventory so it doesn't fill up. So I'm only going to make it drop the first three. So after rock three we want to run the function drop and in drop we want to press and release key shift and you'll have to make sure in your settings that if you go to controls that shift dropping is on. Now after that we want to move the mouse, actually we want to click the mouse, send mouse click, move the mouse, you can press control and shift and move your mouse over the rock and it'll automatically grab the coordinates. So that's rock one, fast speed, copy that, paste it twice, now you can do the control shift again to change the coordinates, that's rock two and rock three. So now it'll press shift, um, it'll hold shift down, it'll click the three rocks and we want to release the shift key. Release. 
and we want to wait five seconds after doing that. Actually, no, we'll, we'll only wait two seconds. So now I'm just going to quickly drop those and we'll see how it runs. So it seems to work pretty well. Now if we want it to loop, we can add a label at the top. And we can call this top. And at the very bottom of the script, we can add go to. And this will go to the label top. So each time it runs, it'll go straight back. Um, we don't have any anti-band because this is a very quick script but if you did want to add some anti band like uh, random mouse movements um, within the window or whatever I'll just drag that so we can see drop like for example with drop it's always going to keep clicking the same uh, three spots that we selected but if we want to click randomly on these rocks we can do this Open up the notepad real quick Alright, we're just going to use this to mark down <coughs> the location of each thing. So I'm going to go control shift on the top left of the rock. So 843828. 843828. So I'm grabbing the coordinates from the very top left of the rock here because we want that to be the top. And I want to grab it from the bottom as well. So any clicks within that will be a accurate click. Go away. Sorry, I've got program running over there um, so move the mouse to the bottom right press control shift and we've got eight five six eight four five so now we want to generate a random number we'll call this random X and we know that the X we want the minimum X is eight four three so from eight four three to 856 we can click and we want to copy and paste that and the random Y will be 828 and 845 so it's going to randomly generate a number oh, I have to rename that so for the random X and Y it's going to randomly generate a number between 843, 856 and 828 and 845 so now we can replace these with random X and random Y so that's for the first rock now we can copy this again after that and we want to get the coordinates of the second rock so what we do is open up the second send mouse click and we're going to go same thing top left 888 829 bottom now when it drops in the rocks it should click randomly, randomly rather than click on the same pixel every time so I just saved that really quick and I'm gonna go ahead and remove actually I'm gonna generate a random number we want to wait from one to three seconds random I'm gonna call that variable random wait and instead of waiting for two seconds we will now wait for the random wait okay so now when we run this I'm gonna drop these real quick so yeah that's pretty much it now we have our own mining bot it um it works fine it does what we want it to do it's not super sophisticated or anything it doesn't have any crazy anti-band but it's just uh, a little example it gives you a general idea of how things work so before I go I'll just explain how we do things so we have the label at the top and then we focus on the room light window then we run function rock one which will go for the blue rock It'll move the mouse to the image, and after one second, it'll send a left mouse click. This is the image we chose. If you want to, you can actually uh, take a picture of like a smaller section, say like a tiny little bit of the blue. Um, and 
instead of doing the foreground window, you could, uh, we'll leave it as a foreground window, but we'll get rid of the subregion. And that way, now that we have a tinier selection of the blue, you can zoom out and it should still find it no matter what. Uh, delete, and we'll wait for tiny blue. Now, if I run this, it should find it. See, so even though we were zoomed out, it was still able to find it. So you can zoom in and out, and the bot will still work regardless of the camera position. That's just something you're able to do as well. Um, anyways, after it does that, it runs function rock 2, which will click the yellow, and then it runs rock 3, and then it randomly generates coordinates for these three rocks, and we'll drop them, and then it repeats. So it's pretty simple, but it works. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll be making more guides soon. I do tend to go a bit fast sometimes, but hopefully you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, you can just leave a comment or send me a message, whatever you want to do, and I'll get back to you.